In this video, let's talk about another category of always continuous functions and the category is named as inverse trigonometric function. We already know from the previous video that trigonometric functions are always continuous sin and cos, the rest 4 are always continuous in their respective domains. Similarly, these 6 inverse trigonometric functions which are sin inverse x and so on are also always continuous but only in its respective domains. Let's start with the proof of sin inverse x being continuous in its domain minus 1 to 1. The proof of any of these is not needed. You only need to memorize that yes, the inverse trigonometric functions are always continuous in their respective domains. What I'll be doing is I'll be proving this one and the rest are up to you to prove or not. This is not needed as I again tell you only memorize. Now the function given to me is y is equal to fx and that is equal to what we need to prove sin inverse x. Now if this is the case can I compare these two and write that yes my x is equal to what? x is equal to sin y that is there x is equal to sin y. Now if x is equal to sin y and I know that I need to prove for continuity I basically what need to show I need to show the limit fx at x tends to a let me write it more clearly limit fx at x tends to a is what it is actually equal to the value of the function that I need to prove limit fx at x tends to a what is fx fx is sin inverse x so it is limit x tends to a and here it is sin inverse x this is the story and what is if limits value okay what is f of a f of a f of a means here it should be a so here also it should be a so it is sin inverse a now if it is sin inverse a that means the value of the function is sin inverse a if the answer to the limits is also sin inverse a yes we can prove it is continuous so that i say limit fx x tends to a is here now x tends to a means what you can directly put sin inverse a Similarly, if you don't need direct substitution and you need in the form of y, not in the form of x, let's change it a bit, it becomes limit fx, x tends to a here, now I will be changing in the form of y, observe carefully, it is limit y, y tends to sin inverse a. You can always place it more appropriately, I know that it is about x. In the initial steps but later if I wish to prove it in the form of y I need to change everything in y so it becomes limit y tends to sin inverse a I have changed the limits to suit my interest here it should be y now if it is y here and sin inverse a is there so what happens in the initial and last steps initial steps were here the last steps means you have to just substitute so it becomes sin inverse a. So you started with f of a being differently sin inverse a explicitly. The answer to the limits is also sin inverse a. Since both these are equal, I say that I have proof for continuity. And similarly, the rest all you can prove and conclude that inverse trigonometric functions are always continuous in their respective domains.